So let's start. Hi, good afternoon. We are happy to have all of your presence here today for this webinar, uh, sorry, forum entitled How to Design Structured Internship Programs brought to you by SME uh, Association of Malaysia and Cable Malaysia, a mobile recruitment platform for interns and fresh graduates. A person who is no longer, I mean, no stranger to us, Mr. C.S. Chin, our National uh, Secretary General, will officiate this forum and with me, Camelia, today as your moderator. So with us today, we have three honorary guest speakers. Let me give an intro, a very quick intro to each one of them. Uh, we have here Farah. Uh, she is the advisor to the interns and for the and the person in charge of the internship programs for Sunwin University in Malaysia. She also carries additional responsibilities as an active member of the National Career Nas uh, Development Centre Association, or in short, called NAPDA. Besides that, Farah is also actively involved in HRDF Career Coaching Program and Azeta Foundation Mentor Program. Ilani, or fondly known as Lani, is the strategic a uh, communication manager for Epic Experience Group, a local engagement uh, agency for offline and online brand solutions. She is the hiring manager and also the mentor or coordinator for all interns hired into the company. They regularly engage communicative uh, and, uh, candidates who are proactively and passionate about creating brand experience. She today will be sharing her experience from her company, how her company actually designed uh, internship programs, converting them to permanent employees and continue to groom them uh, and develop them into young talents uh, and into manage management positions. Uh, last but not least, our third speaker, uh, Mr. Nazit, he is the sector head for Southern Region at Talent Corp Malaysia Bahad. He will be sharing with you today uh, what is a structured internship program or known also as My SIP by Talent Corp. So some of the burning questions that we have from the audience today would be, you know, what can um, my SIP and how does it actually benefit the companies and the interns? What are the eligibility criteria and how to actually participate in this? So we really look forward to Nazif sharing on how SME members can leverage uh, on this program successfully. Right. So um, the objective of today... Uh, the objective of the online uh, forum today uh, for our business leaders will be actually discussing on how do employers benefit from the structured internship program, how to incorporate internship programs into hiring strategy and talent pipelining, and how to curate quality internship program through uh, best practices. So hope that through today's sharing, we'll be able to take some good points back as a reflection for improvement. So before we go on, just some very top line rules and regulation. This is a Zoom on a webinar format, which means that we cannot actually see you online, but we can definitely feel your presence and your vibes. If you can type in the chat box and say hi to everyone here today. So let's warm up and get cozy and welcome all our guest speakers whom, are, um, whom I've just introduced uh, earlier, right? So along the way, if you have any questions, we relating to the speakers, you can type in the chat box. I will try my best to pick all the questions uh, that you have for them. And don't worry if we actually miss some of your questions, we'll definitely be compiling that and emailing those Q&A back to you uh, a day or two after this forum. So let us start scoping the audience, all right, so that we can actually have a more uh, effective uh, forum. Can I just find out how many of you here are commercial leaders or business leaders? Or how many of you here are uh, HR practitioners? Uh, how many of you here are career services? Uh, people coming from career services? And is there any students in the hall? Or at least can, uh, do we miss out anyone? So just feel free to, is this a poll or a chat? Okay, so can we just, Close um, up the poll, and then we will be able to see the scope of the audience. Business leaders, HR professionals, or just managers, fresh grads, interns, or if we have any students here at all. If we start career services, can we also know what proportion of your workforce are interns? Oh, 100%. What are the main challenges that you face? when trying to work with interns? 
is an interesting question. We have verbal communication bar barrier, retaining interns as full-time employees. Uh, most of us would say that, okay, it's still coming in, so let's wait for a bit. If I've missed out any of you, um, the business leaders, HR, you can just type in the chat room and Yeah, and introduce yourself. Oh, hello, Kim. Nice to have you here today. Okay, so most of us here in the audience is uh, coming from good HR professionals, 40% of you all, and the rest are basically managers. We have uh, some fresh grads here and interns as well. Okay, that's good. Welcome, everybody. Uh, what proportion of your workforce are interns? Less than 20%. 90 over percent, but they are, uh, okay. So there's uh, some uh, companies here that uh, do hire interns, but I guess you guys are here to actually pick up, you know, more uh, are basically guidelines in insights or strategy on how to actually, you know, engage interns better. And what the main challenge uh, that you face while trying to work with interns, most of you guys would have said, 43% um, of you are saying, slow at picking up things. Okay, let's see whether, you know, we'll be able to actually assist in this area. The other 42% are saying that creating a suitable work culture for interns, very good. So there's an intention here that we can, you know, we can all learn from the speakers. And then the third most popular would be retaining interns as full-time employees after their internship. Okay, excellent. I think this is the perfect forum for us to actually discuss this. So let me just kick off. Uh, sorry, Mr. Chin, let, uh, let's go with Mr. Chin. Uh, can you kindly officiate this forum for us? Thank you so much. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks, Camilia. You're most welcome. Think, uh, it's good uh, to see all of you here. This, uh, fortunately, no rain outside because I'm driving. I stopped somewhere just to get my... Uh, oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sorry about that, uh, but uh, I think uh, it is a good topic for all of us today, right? And as a business owner, we always found difficulty in terms of getting internship and how good we deal with them. So I think today uh, we are glad that you have three good speakers. Camelia, thanks a lot for your, your kind invitation to them. And uh, as SME Malaysia, uh, Malaysia's largest uh, SME association, we are really keen. Uh, to work with all of you to find out how to help our members, right? Even today, we do not have too many uh, participants online, but I think our program will keep on uh, putting in our Facebook, you know, and we will still broadcast to our members. And uh, most of the most of the webinar where we, we, we do, we do have many other people start logging in and look at that. And a lot always, I do face many of these uh, webinars, especially on uh, all those uh, pertaining to to, to job wise, to, to this uh, career wise, there are a lot of them asking, when, when can I re review again, you know, the whole thing. I mean, it's a good thing. It's good sharing session today. I hope everybody will benefit. The kind of uh, programs that will be, you know, coming by, you know, in the near future. And uh, once again, thank you everybody and uh, hope everybody will have a good sharing session as well as uh, bringing something back you know, for themselves. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to all speaker and thanks thank to all of you. Thank all you, right. Mr. Chin. Please drive safe. Please stay safe if you're parked at the side. I think that, you know, maybe, <laughs> yeah, uh, let us just, uh, this will be a recorded session. Uh, like Mr. Chin said, we will be recording it uh, and for viewing later part. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let me just throw some, you know, top line questions to basically the speakers, and that to kick off, you know, the forum. So let's start with uh, basically the youngest in the block, in the university level. Okay. <laughs> right. Farah, what is the expected learning outcomes that student must meet, you know, to complete their internship? So what what is the usual, you know, internship program that is happening? Uh, not just not just in Sunway University, I think Farah also can represent, you know, NAGDA as an association to also speak on behalf of uh, the uh, universities in Malaysia. Right, go ahead, Farah. Thanks, thanks, Mr. Chin. Uh, 
Thanks, Camilla. First of all, thank you so much, uh, everyone, for uh, first of all attending the session in the middle of the day in the rainy, <laughs> but hopefully somewhere safe. <laughs> yeah. uh, and thank you, SME, as well Association, for inviting me for this forum. Glad to meet new people, especially we have quite a number of KHR professional uh, in the room. So I, I think I think the idea to also like learn from each other, but at least today from the perspective of um, Sanwei University as well as wearing another hat uh, in National Association of um, all the private and uh, as well as the public university, including Polytechnic, which is not now. Uh, we had all this discussion, you know, uh, share best practices. And uh, that's why uh, some of my perspective is not just for Sanwei, for any of the students out there, fresh graduates. So this is again, maybe a general overview about uh, some of, you know, uh, feedback that we have. So coming back to your question, Camilia, um, I think uh, in terms of the expectation, objective, learning outcome that we want uh, from the university level perspective, of course, uh, different program definitely will be different. Uh, some are a bit more flexible because the industry, the program is a bit more generic. So pretty much you can go anywhere, you are feel free to explore uh, the whole idea about the industry, but some are very specific. So if I can bring some example, like for sciences and technology, a bit more technical, of course they wanted, uh, even if in, in our internship, uh, I would say objective uh, learning outcome, we highlighted it very clearly that we want something relevant to the program, something that really emphasized about the learning in industrial insight as well as practicality. It's more like the idea of bridging the theory out there to make sure that they understand, oh, whatever they learn theoretically, this is exactly what happened in the industry. Because truth to be told, uh, we want to make sure that these students understand whatever that, you know, happening out there, but we can do as much as why me, my lecturer. <laughs> I'm not a lecturer, by the way. <laughs> so yeah, but lecturer has very limited, you know, limited resources and limitations in terms of bringing that whole industry exposure. That's why we highlighted very clearly it has to be industry relevant. That's why when it comes down to specific task, specific job role, we want it to be, yes, exactly if you were to implement this kind of task, this kind of role to your newly hired um, employee in the company, this would be the similar approach and similar structure as well. So yeah, that's pretty much along those lines. But of course, with those people in like a business, um, a bit more data analytics, even data analytics, the core is data, but now if you go to different industry, you will be analyzing yeah, yes. you'll be analyzing different data as well. But the idea is that how then you can learn data analytics in general. So something like that. So of course, uh, general objective uh, can be very different from program to program. Uh, right. And yeah, uh, that's why I think um, university, uh, I think the whole idea is, is again bridging the theory to make sure that it's like really industrial centric when it oh. comes to internship. Yeah. Okay, so usually when the companies want to engage interns from universities per se, what mm -hmm. is the best mode for them to actually do it? Like, and how do they know whether they are qualified for you know, a specific learning outcome or not you know, based on the industries? Can you share a bit more on this area? Uh, there's a few. There's a there's a few approach. Of course, uh, sometimes as I mentioned, it could be very generic. It could be very uh, specific. That's why when it comes to I cannot speak for the whole university. Maybe different university have different method. Especially when public university, they have like a huge number of students going out every year, every term. Uh, for Sunway specifically, we have a guideline and it will be given to our employers, specifically to our supervisor. Why? Because we are not just want to, uh, the employer to understand the HR people, but we want whoever that will be the key person that will be supervising, monitoring, guiding this intern would understand, oh, they actually need this and this and this. Because honestly, our students, sometimes we, we assume they know, but nowadays common sense is no longer common sense. So you really <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Yes, it's exactly interesting. I don't want to bring the whole discussion about Zen, Gen Z. Uh, I don't right. want to attack any generation, but the whole idea, right. I think even, even nowadays, I think all of us even like, you know, still fairly very new to all these like changes in technology. So that's why sometimes 
oh, we thought this is like, oh, like this, but no, it's not like that. So that's okay. why to align all these things, it has to be documented at least outline and then we come into like a, a proper, uh, I would say, consensus between both mm. parties. Okay, this mm. is the expectation and very mm. good from that. Okay, so I know earlier on from the from the poll, we do have uh, quite a number of actually HR practitioners there and also some companies who already say that, you know, I've already started engaging uh, interns. But for the benefit of those companies who are quite new to, you know, uh, getting interns into uh, working with them on the internship program. So what is the normal, you know, internship cycle? Like, you know, public universities just probably once once a year kind of thing. But how about for private universities? And how long is it usually, the duration? Uh, so this is a very common question as well. We got from all companies. Uh, so that's why if you, for example, come to NADA, so we have all this sort of like a very brief summary. It may not be representative for all university, but at least the common one, the, you know, the one part of our members, you will have this uh, internship uh, cycle, uh, internship date, graduation date, tabulated in a very brief summary. Ah, okay. Because, yes, because in from, NADA, right? Not NADA, NADA website. Okay. NADA. Uh, not, uh, we don't publicly website, but you can drop an inquiry and we will share to specific employers. Yeah. Okay. Because sometimes okay. all this information changes as well. Like for example, the program name and things like that whatever available for each university right so yeah so something okay. like that because uh, to be honest with you for private university uh, different people have I would say different uh, structure in terms of the academic calendar for, right. uh, for us for example I think COVID has impacted us in some way yeah. so typically for ours we only have one internship term which is January until March which is three months only okay but, yeah, I think nowadays for different school under Sunway University, we already have more than one term because we have to accommodate, uh, accommodate those students that, uh, hey, I kind of quite late in terms of graduation because of the COVID. Now yep. I'm back. Do I have to wait for one whole year not doing yeah. anything just for the internship, right? Yep. Something yep. along those lines. So that's okay. why we yeah have a different... But for public, yes, because most of them, they require about like six months-ish of latihan industry they call mm -hmm. it mm. so yeah it could be yeah usually at one fixed term okay week. okay thanks farah so cassandra chua is asking whether she can have the website to the link so if you don't mind farah can, if you have you have fun to have the website link you can just type it in the chat box but otherwise cassandra will get back to you okay yeah. thanks because a lot I, but i don't know camelia because for me i only have like posting option to host and panelists i don't think oh. i can post to yeah everyone okay department. all right so yeah. okay so cassandra later we will get back to you on that yeah mm -hmm. okay so thank you so much now lani your companies hire a lot of interns right so can you tell us more about your company's internship program and you know what kind of benefit do you see in this? You've been doing this for quite a number of years, really, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me just uh, share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so, okay, hi. Uh, you guys can call me uh, Lani. Welcome, everyone. I hope everyone has had lunch already. It's a nice... A rainy day tomorrow, like a pink week, I'm in here. Okay, <laughs> uh, so just want to uh, bring this back to like our topic, right? It's about how do we create uh, structured internships. And in the long run, actually, the question is about how do we create sustainable careers within our organization and company sure. so that people stay with us in the long term, right? Uh, and so I've been with the Epic Group for like over six years now, coming to seven years. Okay. And that's like when you talk to any Gen Z or anyone in the event, events industry or marketing industry, like I'm like part of the furniture. <laughs> so it's very long. It's okay. just very long. Yeah. Yes, it's very long. in the industry, you're kind of like they jump quite a bit. one, two years, one, two years, they jump. Yes, that's right. Long, okay? uh, and the thing is, I have jumped technically, but I've jumped within the organization under multiple companies, right? So technically, okay, my degree is hospitality and tourism, then I did my management training in Mandarin Oriental, and then I did sales for a while. So in the beginning of my career with Will we go viral with this uh, video like 
Tani, will Thank we go you. viral with this video? <laughs> oh, to God, give we... us a <laughs> surprise guest for us? Malaysian budget for this one. <laughs> oh my God, I never imagined I would be one of those people. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah, so beginning of my career was very, you know, in and out, trying to find my right? So at first, I was in, uh, I did PR in under our PR arm, and then after that, I moved to strategy, and now I'm at the booth level uh, with Hot right? And the ability for us to grow and sustain within the company, right? How, how to sustain a, a person for this long goes back to really our structural practices that we implement at the PR level, right? But my success story only one of like many, right? We have many leaders in the organization that have started from the internship level and then they have grown to be the heads of the organization. So for example, we have Daniel. He has been with the company about like 17 years, right? I mean, he left for a couple of years, for like one or two years, but then he came back. <laughs> so he started off really as an intern 17 years ago with Hot Shoes and then he moved his way all the way up to group account director. Then I think the Panat, did a bit of a break, came back as our business manager. Then we also have Andy, who again started off at the, the junior level and then is now the CEO of our digital arm. Uh, Nikki, uh, she didn't start off as the intern with us, but she started off at the pretty senior uh, level. Uh, and she's now the general manager of Cambodia. So it's, it's, we're very thankful that everyone has actually managed to have a very long uh, and fruitful career with us, right? And most recently, we have a few colleagues that started off as interns, uh, but have been promoted uh, to staff. So for example, you know, and since our last conversation in July, we've actually had, uh, uh, had our last conversation in April, sorry, I saw Lai here, uh, we added Shafiq to the list, right? So nice. he started off as our social media intern, and now he's our content executive. And nice. with each of them, we really work uh, with them to sort of pave their career within the organization according to what our business needs and what they want to do as well, right? Because I think, especially when you're talking about Gen Z, they are very, the difference with Gen Z, is they know what they want, right? Which is a really a nice thing because they can tell you, oh, I'm interested in this, so can we sort of grow that way? So I find the key to retaining them is really about having open communication, sort of meeting them in the middle because they do understand, okay, the business has, need but I also have my needs so the magic is when you're able to sort of uh, find the middle ground Okay, okay. okay. Hang, on, hang in there, Lani. I have got a very interesting question from Andy. Ah. Thanks for that question, pertaining to that. I think that there are not, I mean, not all companies are willingly, you know, taking up interns at the free will, right? Some are actually facing some challenges. So I think that, you know, together with uh, Andy and some other HR, you know, they're asking how to gain trust for management that interns will be a good talent pipeline strategy for the company. How, how did it start off first in your company? Did you find that you needed to, you needed to get buy-in from the management? Not really. I think the easy way to buy in to management, honestly to say interns is the education. <laughs> to help you do the small stuff. But I think once you have the structural practices in place, which can show how interns can, because interns, right, it's a very, they have three months usually as a training ground for them to prove themselves or as to why you as a company should train them, right? So later on uh, in the few slides I have, we have how we sort of a grading criteria for how we see each intern as worthy for the company to invest in develop because we don't do it for all the interns. I think this is one, two, three, four, five that we have selected. But we have other interns that probably we didn't we didn't see as okay uh, as being able to contribute in the long term. Because also certain interns much when they come in, they have to go back to school after that. So mm. for those interns then you just don't have that conversation with them. Mm. Uh, so okay uh, but I, I will I understand that it's definitely a concern but interns are a great way to help offload the smaller tasks to your core team members so that your core team members can focus more on delivering numbers and you know doing the things that uh, will actually move the pipeline. You get what I mean? So it's just about how do you focus the, the effort. Okay. Uh, so if I <laughs> so like I'm actually gonna get to how, how we create those success stories. 
Right. Yep. So first thing is that we have a very strong and proud legacy of being one of the premier event agencies in Malaysia. We are the first uh, event uh, agency in Malaysia to be certified with ISO 9001 and OSHA 6001, and we've recently been recertified thanks to our HR director, Ms. Uh, and from there, we've actually grown to have six different shows. Right? We do events, we do tech, we do digital marketing, we have our own green team studio, we do creative. We have our own uh, intellectual property and stuff like that. So having interns is essential <laughs> and crucial in order to get all this work done to make sure that we meet the international standard of work for all of our clients, right? And so the journey of developing a career or creating structured internship starts with finding the right candidate. And when we look for candidates, we look for a very <laughs> specific set of values. So even if we do like hundreds of interviews, right? Like it's very, we look for very specific things, okay? So the purpose for us as an organization is to deliver what matters, right? And so what we are looking for is people who sort of match our company's value system, right? So that, so for example, our value system is moments matter, people matter, mindset matter, value system. So moments matter is like, we need to see that when they talk about their the subject, but right? you know what, if they are applying for security or they're applying for they're applying for finance. There has to be a certain level of passion that when they talk about it. Okay, second is about mindset matter. It's about we need to have the feeling that they are hungry to learn. Okay, people matter is all about when we meet with intern, do I do we feel like is there something that this person has that our team doesn't have? That we think they can add value to the team. Okay. Lastly, it's about values. So we, because we operate in a very high trust environment, it's a very team-oriented environment. So having uh, integrity is something that's very important to us. So this is the baseline. Okay, so when you pass that conversation, all right, uh, we will have, we go, why rule we go into step one, which is to establish the hard skills. Okay, so first thing first is we need to know any intern when they apply. First thing is we send over a skill-based checklist to see uh, do you have the minimum criteria of skills to qualify for me? Right? So it de each department head will say, okay, no, it must be minimum. You know, for us, we do a simple rate of skills, one out of five. Uh, so for example, uh, like for the digital team, Lara, the, the key one is Laravel. So they need to score at least two out of five for Laravel. If they don't meet this, then they don't even qualify for me. This kind of thing. So why we do this is because we have an international standard of work uh, that we need to meet. So whoever joins the company must have a baseline skill level so that the team that is the core team has something to build on already, right? Okay, so step two is all about passing the interview, right? So nowadays though, I feel like a lot of uh, like universities really do help their interns to prepare for the interview. So usually this part, if they make it to this part, usually it's not a problem. So once uh, they actually join the company, right? So every single department in FA, whether it's Horseshoe or any other company, so this is where we, they, so we all have an onboarding deck. So this is where we introduce, okay, what the department does, what are the rules of this department, and how does this department fit into the whole sort of scenario, the whole organization, right? Because there's a lot of departments, okay? Then step four is about tracking their progress. Okay, so this is within that onboarding deck, so it's not a long deck, but so we have a week by week, sometimes it's day by day, sometimes it's month by month, it depends on the department, right. um, but it lists down what are the goals that the intern needs to achieve on a week by week basis, because I also feel that um, a lot of interns, right, they like to know uh, what is coming, they want to know what they are supposed to do. They want to know what they need to do, what they need to achieve, right? So this works as a very easy checklist. So this one breaks down like at the end of this week one, you need to understand what the department needs to do, you need to know who does what, you need to have access to all the platforms, you need to know who's your mentor, you need to know, for example, this is the corporate forms, you need to understand what is the basis of all the companies, right? You need to understand. And it breaks down, okay, day one, day two, day three, or this is what is the agenda that is going, what you are going to learn on this, so that they have a very clear sort of idea. And this is broken down week one, week two, week three, 
it, and it's, you... it's very detailed, right, Lani? So who, yeah. is in, who is in charge of actually, uh, you know, track, uh, right, sorry, who is supposed to be coordinating it? And then does the line manager or the direct superior is supposed to be, you know, designing this and walking so, through day one to day five? How, how does that work? In so this, uh, this sheet or this document is created by the district department head. Lah. So together you will work, HR will work together with, for example, uh, when I was doing it with the tech team, I will work with the CEO, we come up with this together. So um, that when the person is onboarded, so usually when the intern is onboarded, let's say he's a web developer, there is the manager for the web developer. So the web development manager will walk through the intern with all these. So, and then actually going to your question, so we have a halfway checkpoint, right? So when we do the halfway checkpoint, it's like usually your internship, maybe we do it halfway so that we see, okay, how, how many of these things have you achieved? How many of these things have you not achieved? Okay, uh, and so it's a it's pretty long. I guess my company likes to have long reports. <laughs> okay. uh, but at the end of this, there is a percentage, right, which determines the level of your performance, of the intern's performance, right? And these are graded against our corporate values, right? So moments matter relate to your quality of work. People matter relate to how uh, they have demonstrated their ability to work as a team. Mindset matter is how, how well they have uh, demonstrated the ability to learn and grow within the one and a half months. So it's because usually three months, right, halfway. And then finally is uh, values matter. So it's whether or not during this time have they demonstrated any of our values. So this is sort of our guideline to decide whether or not we want to, we want to offer you a position as to stay long term or not, right? Mm. So because it's a two-way uh, conversation and I think uh, for example, with Shafiq, when we had this conversation, it was very clear for us that we wanted to uh, hire him, to keep him on, but then it was a conversation of like, okay, well, what do you want to do? Where do we want to go in this hmm. career path that we want to create, right? So the reason of why we go through all these things is because we're very focused on creating moments uh, for tomorrow. And in order for us to deliver on our purpose and our business, and, uh, you know, it requires us to have really the right people uh, and those people need to have the right skills to, for us to build on in order for us to go long term. So that's basically, you know, in a nutshell, <laughs> how thanks. we do structure internship. At, uh, yeah, thanks so much, Lani, for sharing, uh, you know, to great detail and all that. I'm just curious, like, how much time does the superior actually need to engage with the interns on a daily basis? Is Actually, this... the managers deal with the interns on a daily basis. Yeah, how, I mean, there's obviously there's a tracking, there's also a very fast prompt feedback, you know, kind of system, yeah. the way oh, that I see it. We just do huddles. We do huddles every, every, it depends on the department. Some people like, so for example, the tech team, they do their huddles every day at 9 a.m. Okay. So they get updates and they get, so everyone has very fast feedback, for example, in the tech team. I think the social team also is every, every day for the corporate comm side is every every Tuesday, Thursday. It depends really on how the manager wants to run their department. Mm. But basically we are very the, the, the secret is you have to have huddles. <laughs> so you okay. have you are able to have that fast feedback and also so that you are in touch with each other, you know? Right. Especially because right now we are I think I would say we are pretty much hybrid uh, in terms right. of our working format right so right. because last time was like totally work from home then that oh it was first work from office totally then it was work from home and then now like somewhere in the middle so it's important to have these huddles just to make sure that everyone is aligned whether you work from home girl you work in the office girl, everybody is aligned yeah right right and and what is the conversion rate like so say if you were to engage 10 or hire 10 interns right Conversion rate for your company into permanent employers, oh, employees after is, that? I can't actually give you a number right. because it, de it depends on the student. Right. It depends on the student. So sometimes it's a hit, sometimes it's a hit. Yeah. Okay. So okay. can't say like that. It's not like that. Okay, okay. No worries about that. Okay. Sorry, Nazit. I'm, I'm going to go to you in a short while, but this is, I, I'm going to 
get back to Farah for a bit, right, before I go to Ibn Nadib. Farah, hearing from Lani, right, right, this sounds like a perfect company to get your interns into, correct? <laughs> so can you just share with us, right, typically, you know, your students, when you send out for internship, three months, yes, you know, to some, it's not too long, not too short, you know, for an internship program. What are some of the challenges that you hear from your students when they, you know, you send them out and they come back and then, you know, some challenges are that you are okay to share lah, in, in this group? You want all? <laughs> are you ready <laughs> to hear all <laughs> the students? Sorry. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, but I think what uh, Elani presented just now, I think it's a very good starting point to really lay out all the necessary, the one I mentioned just now. So we already, from the university perspective, we have the objective and Lani bring it to like, okay, this is university, I understand what university want. And then I also, from the company perspective, I want this one for each of my unit. And then I break it down into like more a day-to-day task. And I can see like from the day-to-day that it's very specific and it's definitely aligned to us back again. Uh, again, but before we even do that, I think one of the challenges that typically is actually to kind of align, number one is the durations of, um, let's say, duration of internship because that will affect the whole expectation, deliverable at the end of the day. Because some students are expecting like, okay, I really want to learn a lot. And then suddenly going to a company where three months internship going to pass by just like that. Mm. (laughs) Yeah, because minus of the public holiday, which Malaysia is pretty much very generous about it. (laughs) So minus of anyone else, it's just like, what, what, two months? It's just like that. So they don't have a lot much. So that's why I think to set the durations first, it really, really definitely would be helpful. So that comes to this, my second point, the, the expectation. Sometimes misalignment expectation is really a huge challenge. I think what Iladi mentioned, you know, some students they are very like, okay, I want to do, I want to do this, I know I want to do this. But we also have another group of students that is uh, I do IT. I know IT, but I don't know where I want to go. <laughs> Something like that. I okay with everything. You want to go? Okay, so here. Okay, so. So where are you gonna go? Lani, you, <laughs> Lani, you get you you get any interns like that or not? Like you know, oh, go on, go on, go on. So <laughs> typically in this kind of situation, what what do you do with them? I mean, they sort of like had no choice but to complete their internship program. Yeah. Because they studied this area, they have no choice to go back to IT. But then yeah. they, you know, when you send them out there, Farah, then they're like, okay lah, I'm not motivated to do anything because my father, mother asked me to study this, right? <laughs> so how does exactly. the company in this in this manner actually play a role, you know, in terms of bringing them back? Well, like sekarang, the companies are like, you know, teachers and educators as well, yeah? Yeah, actually it's true. <laughs> we have to teach them. <laughs> That, that's why even, I don't know if everyone here are aware about the 70, uh, maybe Nazir yeah. can share off after this, right? The 70 yes, yes, yes. Yeah, don't want to put the study. Why? Because study is like so boring. I can earn money, which is the end goal of working without having go through like further study. So that's a very legit question actually, which is of course, is you know, a long discussion and argument, but hey, uh, it's, it's kind of understandable why they even come out to that kind of shortcut, I would say. Yeah. yeah, that's right, that's right. So before we go to Nazib again, again, that 72% of the SPM students say, no, we will discuss that later right after. Lani, so what, what is the solution when you meet this okay. kind of uh, loss? So when we do the evaluation, sorry, I forgot to mention, the, the evaluation is, uh, there's two parts to it. It's a self-evaluation. So, sorry, I saw the comment before. Okay, okay. And I think the mic just needs to be closer to the... So, yeah. uh, it's two parts. So, the first part is filled up by the intern. So, it's a self-reflection. Okay? okay. And then the second part... So, that kind of helps them to get their yeah, thoughts about what do they like. Because there are questions in there about what is the standout thing, what is the challenges that you face. So, there are things that will trigger them to do. Okay? The second half of it is filled out by... The, their mentor. Okay, so when they come in the organization, everybody got mentor. Nobody is alone. Uh-huh. So when we've, I have, I think just recently, you know, when I met someone and I said, What do you think you want to do? Do you want to continue or do you, what happens after this, right? Because you finish in like three weeks. And he said, uh, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. And I said, okay, that's fine. So basically, 
from there, we will look at, you know, the evaluation and we think, well, okay, according to this, the manager thinks you do this really well, we think you do that really well. And, you know, if you want to stay here, then these are certain things that mm. we will need to see. If you, want to see. you know, so that you, I think it, it's not about forcing, it's not about anything, it's about opening the channel to have dialogue with mm. them. Mm. You know, and to me, if they are the, the person that is, uh, oh, I don't know, lah, I'm not sure, lah, then perhaps it might not be the right candidate. That's the organization. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Okay. Maybe, so it, yeah, this is not the right fit for them because it's a two way thing mm. you know, at the end of the day. Okay. So if I may just quickly conclude what Lani and Farah had just mentioned about uh, this internship program is that number one, how to actually, you know, uh, run successful uh, internship program is that number one, establish an intern program coordinator. I think, Lani, you play a very good role in that, right? So you set up all these <laughs> templates, all these framework the work process, that's one, the structure. And then what you also said is that give each intern a mentor or a buddy. Yeah. And I think that it doesn't, you know, my, from my own personal view is that it doesn't necessarily need to be their direct superior or even someone up there. Lah. Because, mm. at the, right? because at the end of the day, they are interns. Sometimes if they've got problems, so they're shy to open their mouth and tell yes, them. Yes, it's true. Right? So yeah. if it's a peer-peer like that, I think they're a little bit more, you know, chillax yeah. and feel free yeah. to actually, you know, um, share. And then set goals and the workloads right from the start. Yeah. So if you have a three months, for us it, then we set three months. The expectation yeah. is already set, right? If it's six months, then we have a slightly longer program yeah. for you. Okay? Yeah. And then what you have actually shown, which is like, wow, <laughs> make intern development a daily commitment. I'm like, yeah. So like, but you do that. Man. To be fair, we do that with like all the stuff. It's, it's not yes. just interns. Because when we nice. take on the intern, we treat you as you are part of us now. Yeah. Okay. Probably there are, there's maybe one or those two things you don't get, but you are part of this whole. You have been selected out of the many. Yeah. Be part of this whole. So we yeah. treat you as a normal staff. You know, probably yeah. the only thing is you don't get as much work as the others. You it's know, right. you, we, we were. Sort of cater to what you are able to do, right? That's right. That's yeah. right. So, so that's that, how we build their right. confidence and their ability. Right. So there's a lot of commitment. So the 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 message here out there for you know companies who are listening in and you know if you really want to take this internship program to embark it as like your you know talent strategy yeah. pipeline, right? Just make sure that the 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 whole organization is actually ready for it. Yeah, that's true. Right? Even otherwise, yeah. yeah, otherwise then it will be a waste of the intern's time. Yeah. And then it becomes like a burden for the, you know, for the managers and the people on the yeah. on, on the company side as well. Okay? Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the most exciting topic. Yeah. What can Talent Corp actually Talent Corp. <laughs> support us in this? But before we go straight into that burning, burning question, yeah, can you share a bit of light about that 72% of the students, you know, SPM students that we, we did that survey and nobody wanted to pursue the education, the tertiary education? What's that about? Uh, okay, um, coming from the perspective of Talent Corp, yep. um, this 72% it was conducted by like, I think an, uh, or one research body or one research institution. And um, actually we had this, uh, Industry Academia Collaboration Workshop uh, quite recently in Penang. So when we had that workshop, so one of the questions raised was uh, how come this uh, study was conducted and what are the method methodologies used? Mm. Uh, and does, does it actually represent the current scenario in Malaysia, I mean, workforce or, right. or the current scenario of, of the students in Malaysia? Okay, so... Um, we had uh, quite a lengthy discussion on this actually. Okay. Um, the thing is about this seventy-two percent uh, representing those who may not be, you know, no longer interested in pursuing their studies in in whatever disciplines actually. Uh, one of the reasons being highlighted was uh, we blame it to the influencers. Uh, we blame it to the current parents actually, the current generation <laughs> of the parents. Trasse. We being us, I mean, um, Talent Corp was there alongside all the industry players and also the academias. And uh, somehow we are quite consistent uh, on, on the fact that basically 
uh, these days, all these students, uh, they are getting all these inputs from the social media, right? From Instagram, from TikTok. And they are seeing a lot of um, like artificial successes being broadcasted on a daily basis, every minute of the day. To them, saying that you don't have to really study to earn X millions of dollars. You don't have to pursue tertiary education for you to drive Porsche, you know, Porsche cars or things like that. And they are somehow influenced by that because those are the role models for them. That's why we are not acknowledging. Uh, we, we thought, um, I mean, all this while that the role models are those, you know, during our time. But things have changed. For them, basically, they really look up to these personas. They, 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 they think that basically uh, the way these influencers dresses, the way they you know, flaunt their wealth is the way to do or the way to go. So the 72%, it could very well mean that they are, they are now um, quite fixed uh, in terms of not pursuing that uh, tertiary education because they wanted to pursue something similar that their role models are showing them on a daily basis. And uh, the worst part about that is basically what they found about this study. Um, the parents are to be blamed. Like I, 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 I wanted to reiterate that. Why? <laughs> you see, these students, when whenever they are attached to like a part-time job, they are showing their generational uh, attributes. You know, if they were to be scolded by their supervisors, they will come home and say, I don't want to work there anymore. I don't want to be attached to that kind of organizations anymore. And this is quite generic across the generation that we are, we are referring to. And the worst part about that is the parents are reacting to that by saying, it's okay. You can just stay at home. I'll give you the allowance. Or you can just do gig jobs. I mean, earning you enough money to, to, to finance your lifestyle. You get Starbucks on a daily basis. You know, your, your, your phones will not be disconnected, all those things. So this is actually the current scenario. But, right. we are, but we are not saying that we cannot do anything about it. There are ways on how we can best respond to that particular problem. Uh, at Talent Corp, uh, we have this particular uh, assessment tool of which this is, this is among the uh, tools which we believe we can identify the strengths, the weakness, and uh, among the things that you cannot actually identify from the paper qualification. Right. You see, the thing is, hiring managers these days, they are faced with this challenge. Uh, I mean, hiring managers, interns, supervisors, all those guys, uh, they are now required to you know, use these tools a lot more often as compared to the days when we were doing our internship. Because uh, when you are doing this interview, you ask them one question, they will answer one one word or maybe one sentence, not more than that. Uh, and then it is very difficult for you to really identify their strengths, their weaknesses. And you cannot actually pinpoint certain uh, uh, strengths or values in, in a person just by you know, scrolling, scrolling through their academic qualifications. Like for instance, if I were... Dimension. Exactly. If I were to identify whether Ali Ahmad or Asang is actually able to work in a team, you, you, you can't actually identify that using, you know, just browsing through the, 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 the papers. So they need to go through this assessment. You know, from that, basically, we can somehow segregate them according to certain parameters. And then only we can, you know, um, probably put them into certain um, quarters in which they can actually excel in that particular quarters. All right. All right. How do, how do the students or the fresh grads actually get access to this uh, uh, assessment? Ah, okay. So it's free of charge. Um, students can actually log on to, uh, I mean, register and onboard this particular platform called MyNex. Mm. Um, ah. It's publicly available. Uh, okay. It's a web-based a web platform. So they can okay. just log in into that particular platform, register themselves, and then they will have to go through this profiling assessment of which they will have to go through certain parameters like I mentioned just now. Okay. I mean, we are, uh, the platform is meant to identify their work values and interests, right. their personality, their readiness in terms uh, of whether they are now ready to be part of the workforce. Mm. 
mm. and also uh, whether they are actually you know fit into certain mm. description for a certain organization okay all right all right yeah all right so it's on my next i can share you the link afterwards okay okay all right okay so um next question would be right so what are the common challenges faced by companies i'm not sure whether you deal with the employers and do they come back to you after they have actually you know engaged interns from my next or talent corp do they come back and you know share some of their challenges when they actually recruit them yes they do actually um whenever we engage with the company uh, some of the common practices that we do is basically we send out this survey or probably that questionnaire for for us to be able to assess them properly before we you know meet them face to face and we'll be ready with probably some of the solutions responding to the kind of uh, answers they given us uh, earlier okay. all right so but to answer your question on the common challenges uh, i would rather put it uh, in two different uh, perspectives from the internal perspective and also from the external perspective so the common challenges these days um, i was doing this sme facilitation for quite a bit of time so I know for a fact that, you know, this uh, employment in Malaysia is being created. I mean, more than 65% or probably now it's 70% is actually being created from the SMEs. They yes, are really the right. backbone of this economy. Yes. And by neglecting their, you know, their, their, uh, uh, their growth is basically spreading disasters for the, for, for the economy of Malaysia. True. So, and for the company, the internal challenge would be they need to put in place a proper like governance in terms of what do they really need for the internship placement or opportunity to be given to the interns. Mm -hmm. They must first acknowledge the fact that this internship placement can allow them to really identify the right interns for their organization and eventually convert it into their part of their workforce. Mm -hmm. And of course, to be able to do that, they need to get the highest clearance from the management and it has to be trickled down to the uh, implementation level and they have to put uh, proper governance in terms of what needs to be done uh, across the timeline of that duration of, i mean the, the, the internship so that uh, the time spent in their organization is worthwhile and is able to you know convert that particular intent into uh, their employee so that's one particular point which is very critical for that organization and internally, they need to also emphasize on the experiential learning process. It's a journey. This internship process is a journey. You can't just convert someone overnight. You know, you have to feed them with the, the right exposure, the right knowledge. And, but there's also another challenge to do that. They have to balance between, you know, allowing these interns to access into their trade secret. Like some of the machines being used, some of the right. information may not be able to be given uh, to the interns, they are given like restricted access to certain information, right. and this may hinder the, the the process of you know um, preparing them to be your uh, part of your workforce. So that's okay. also another challenge faced by the industries these days. Okay. okay. And also we are talking about um, you know allowing them to use some of, some of the obsolete machines. You know you are trying to phase out certain machines, so let the interns use this machine. Right. So you're not that, really teaching them something which is more advanced or you know yeah. relevant to the industry needs, right? Yeah, but they are, but we cannot really blame them, blame the industry because why? Some of the structure of this internship or the structure of their uh, like, uh, degree program in the universities, right? Some of them, they are allowing students to complete in the final semester of the internship. So, I mean, industries would prefer to have that kind of interns. Mm. You spend the last six, uh, I mean, last semester of your studies in, in uh, doing internship at our place and then we can immediately absorb you afterwards but it's not like across the board some of the institutions they are doing it like you have to go through on the third semester and then for the fourth semester you have to go back and serve the last semester okay. so that's why they are very careful in in terms of allowing access to all those information okay okay and externally uh, i would like to come back to the to the generational issues you see, the shifting trends, uh, I, I mean, I would like to emphasize on this because, uh, again, hiring managers must also be, you know, uh, I, I don't want to use the word to re-educate the hiring managers, but they must equip themselves with, I mean, mm. uh, the new ways of doing things, mm. how to respond to these generational matters, 
because mm -hmm. uh, they are very like you know you say something eh, they, they feel sad about it they won't be coming the next day <laughs> and they, they will live in droves not just by themselves you score one percent he will tell like okay you know what we are coming from the university this is not the place for us so like six or, or ten of them will leave the organization and then this is yeah. a true story yeah it's a true story. I I I can say did that. Yeah. yeah, I actually have a question that came from the audience to ask, like, how to yeah. choose the right company for yourself to develop the right skills, right? So if you're not actually providing them, you know, the necessary experience and the journey that they're looking at, like, what does it say? And Nofara can testify to that. They will just chow and they have got no issues with chowing. But Kisa, yeah. sometimes they even extend their studies. Is that start uh, extend their semester? Yeah. Right. I think, so, I think the one that just drop and leave is okay to tell the friend. But just imagine every nowadays is all the power of social media. Uh, some student again, some student they know the, 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 the line that they shouldn't cross, but some of you know our young generation also may not be aware. We try as much to, you know, as possible to try to tell them but again the power of Twitter, <laughs> the power yeah. of Instagram. It's That's hard right. beyond our control. And That's we, right. we, we, I think in the past, we do have some issues with some employers. It's not an employer is totally like, you know, at fault or right, wrong and things like that. It's just apparently, again, I think to just echo what Nazib mentioned, sometimes, you know, maybe because we are used to like, you know, how we were trained by our previous manager and supervisor. So this right. is how we used to do things. But we use, we thought, again, misalignment expectation. We thought this is the same way that we should treat our new generation. But apparently, we also need to move out a little bit more creative, I would say, uh, approach to this new generation. Not to say that we have to accommodate them all the time, of course. Right, they right. have to be, you know, half half. But at least we need to kind of... Um, equipped with some additional uh, right. knowledge and training yeah, right, before right, right. we actually assign. Even a body, just now, Ilani mentioned that, okay, this should be a body. So the body, the supervisor will probably not work as much if, let's say, they were just like, oh, pick and then mark into like the, the whole situation without knowing the end and tail of everything. Mm -hmm. But if you actually tell, tell them, oh, this is the expectation uh, that we provided, I mean, we expected from you as a body to our intern, then maybe it looks a bit more better in mm. that manner. Mm. So we as also hiring managers need to adapt to the existing needs and management style as well, right? Mm. Okay, so Nazir, coming back to your site, right? How does uh, actually Talent Corp, you know, plan to offer these programs and what kind of support can you provide to companies who wants to participate in this uh, my SIP? All right. Uh, I have quite a number of slides to share. Hold on, yeah. I think it is. It will be a lot more structured for me to explain using the slides. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm sharing the screen now. Can you guys see? Yes, can. There's multiple screens though. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I will not be spending a lot of time on this particular slide because it's too much information being fed to you <laughs> in this particular slide. But there are a few important points to be extracted from this, uh, which is the first one. This is uh, our version of my uh, structure, I mean the National Structured Internship Program. So it is a collaborative effort between us and also the MOHE and also the MOHR. All right. So what, by doing this, we are actually encouraging, encouraging the companies, they can be part of this agenda of making sure that uh, the internship in Malaysia is being given to the interns on a meaningful and a structured basis. Uh, they are to benefit from the double tax deduction being provided under this program. Mm -hmm. All right. So this program works well with the industry because we are actually introducing a very minimum requirement and at the same time, we are actually giving, giving the industry for them to come to us and share their particular structure. And we will advise them accordingly uh, because we have on, only the general set of requirements. Okay. But, uh, for can, them can, you, to, can you share a bit about the requirements? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, but, but before that, I would like to highlight this part of the slide. Okay. So this internship uh, placement, basically, there are a few parts which needs to be highlighted for the companies, they need to ensure that the interns are actually getting knowledge out of it, uh, direct exposure from it, 
the skills are being imparted to them. They are know you know they are being um, trained to have the right attitudes. They can gain from the network from working in that particular organization. And of course, in terms of resources available, in terms of softwares or new technological advancement uh, in this particular organization. Eh? Mm. All right. So we have this uh, National Structured Internship Program. As compared to the general internship, you can see that we introduced this minimum of 10 weeks period. Uh, like I mentioned just now, most of the companies, they would prefer to have it more than six months time or probably three months time. But yes. we, we, are, we are just saying that you can do it for a minimum of 10 weeks. The longer, the better, of course. But uh, nothing less than that. And of okay. course, the internship module, like I mentioned just now, for the companies, they have their own internship module, right? So they have to come to us and share with us. Basically, we need to identify that this module is able to uh, generate all those uh, expectations from that uh, module. I mean, right. the, the knowledge part, the, the experience part and everything. Right, right, right. And of course, uh, for the general internship, most of the time, the companies are not paying anything. Um, I know for a fact that a lot of companies are introducing allowances and some are paying up to 1500 1700 yes. But for this particular National Structure Internship Program, we have divided it into two, of which 600 ringgit minimum allowance for degree and above, professional certificate degree and above, and minimum of 500 for diploma and uh, lower. All right, so it's very minimum. And of course, the, the requirement is for the company to be registered with SSM and they have to do it uh, through MyNext. Uh, this MyNext platform is uh, web-based, so they can mm -hmm. just onboard this particular platform for the company mm -hmm. and then they can do the necessary registration there mm -hmm. and it will lead them to this uh, uh, MySIP on how they can actually apply and benefit from the program. Okay. So question, right, the, the minimum uh, allowance and all that is paid by the company. It's not a subsidy by Helen Corp under my SIP, right? Uh, paid, it is that's the requirement. Paid, uh, okay. uh, yes, yes, it is part of the requirement and it is okay. to be paid by the company to the interns. Okay, okay. All right. right. So um, the, yeah, yeah, managers out there, if you have any questions pertaining to this my SIP, uh, kindly just type in the chat box and we'll try to scoop it up. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Nazib, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, this is a very good opportunity. I mean, we are trying to, as much as possible, um, you know, share this information with the companies, with the industry players that they are actually entitled to get this type of incentive just by working with us for this particular uh, program on structured internship program. And the, the, the minimum requ uh, requirements are very minimal for them to, to comply with. And at the same time, it's, a, like, it's like a win-win uh, arrangement between us and also the company. Okay. Yeah, to gain from it, to get the right intern, and at the same time, they will make sure that this process are uh, somehow acknowledged by the government so that we are giving them the incentive. Yeah? Okay, okay. All right, so for the student eligibility, uh, of course, Malaysian citizen, they are pursuing full-time studies, uh, they are doing the internship in Malaysia, and of course, they have to go through the MyNex talent assessment, I mean, the profiling assessment tool uh, in the MyNex platform. And of course, for them to complete the internship by the completion of the eligible study program. All right. So for the company, we have these incentives of which they, they get to claim for double tax deduction um, for the monthly allowance provided and also for the upskilling and also for the cash allowances on digital and communication part. So this is up to 5,000 per student. Um, so this is something that we are trying to promote as much as possible, uh, again, because we in Talent Corp believe that by doing internship, this is the great way for them to you know, create their own talent pipeline for the company. All right. Mm -hmm. Where do they deposit the company, the, the, the internship program? Uh, just now you mentioned that you know, they need to qualify, right? Or Talent Corp needs to actually validate that they actually have a, a program. So how do they do that? Is it through the MyNex uh, website as well? All right. How do they, yeah. Yeah, so basically, uh, we have just recently launched this MyNext uh, 2.0, um, of which we integrated this National Structure Internship Program into MyNext platform, mm. uh, allowing better access to the audiences that we are serving. Because for MyNext, they are serving three different parties, which is the employers, the student, and also the academia. Mm. And by integrating National Structure Internship Program into MyNext, 
it is also convenient for the employers and also for the students to come on board that pl platform and register themselves. Yeah. And uh, and as you can see from my screen, uh, this is for the company, yeah, this process flow. Mm -hmm. So for the company, they can sign up at this uh, company.mynext.my okay. and they can register their organization there. And we will approve that particular organization. And we will link them to this manual uh, list of um, uh, I mean, details that they have to provide to Talent Corp. Um, of course, from that particular information provided to us, we can uh, immediately identify whether they are mini meeting the minimum requirement or not. All right. So the team will then give the endorsement confirmation through email to the company. And, uh, and then the interns are required to come on board this MyNext platform to do, okay. to do their talent assessment profiling okay. uh, in that platform. All right. All right. So basically, after this program is completed, the company and also the intern, they, they need to submit the evaluation forms to Talent Corp. And this letter for endorsement process will be uh, started upon the completion of that. Uh, I mean, upon we receive all the completed forms from the company and mm -hmm. the interns. All right. So mm -hmm. by then, we will somehow issue this letter for them to do the, for the tax fi filing for the uh, next year. Lah. If you do it, for 2022, of course, you are going to benefit in 2023. Okay. Yeah. All right. Got it. Uh, do they necessarily need to get that talent or the intern from uh, mynext.my or All anywhere right. else and then they can still go into application for this uh, to qualify for this? All right. So the way uh, it is um, uh, being offered through this platform is that you can actually tap from your own talent pool or intern pool uh, from elsewhere or from those, I mean, uh, applying directly to your organization. Right. And if you were to apply in, say, now it's in August, right? So you can still apply for this particular program or incentive by uh, registering in, that, in this <clears throat> platform and also compile those interns already uh, placed in your organization, uh, I mean, as far back as January of this year. Oh, okay. January 2022. Uh, so still Correct. eligible for that. Okay. Correct. They, may, so, they may have left the organization though. Is that uh, still I mean, okay? they, they, they can still submit to us. Okay. We can still go through that particular uh, application from the company. Okay. Because for us, is so long as it is meeting the requirement of this uh, program, okay. we can still include that into this uh, endorsement part. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks for sharing this. How it works, uh, Paige, is very useful. So if anyone wants to actually snap a photo about on this, please feel free to do so. Any questions from your side? There's a Q&A coming in. Just give me a minute. Okay, question from Nasreen. Will Telecorp take some service fee from the employer if employer would like to get intern from my next? Uh, the answer Thank you for is the yes. question. Thank you. Uh, the answer is yes, because there are two uh, routes uh, uh, in the MyNext platform, the first one would be for you to access the, the talent pool or the intern pool within MyNext. All right. But for you to do that, you need to advertise in this MyNext platform and you are going to be charged uh, up to, I think, maximum of 250 per ad. Mm. All right. Uh, and then the interns already, I mean, the pool of interns in this MyNext platform, they would be able to see the ad and apply directly to your company via this MyNext platform. Mm. All right. uh, but you are still eligible by doing so, you are still eligible to apply separately for this structured internship program because these are two different programs. Right. right. Okay. So we yeah. hope that we answered your question, Nasreen. Is there any other questions coming in? I think that we have actually come to the close to the uh, end of the discussion at the moment. Right. Uh, uh, can, can I share a bit can, more on this? Can, can, can. All right. Go so ahead, basically, please. these are among the uh, documents required from the company if they are opting for the manual process in the MyNex platform. Okay. All right. So basically, they are doing the, uh, this uh, registration. So with that approval of registration, they need to provide us with that approval. And then, of course, they need to go through this internship module uh, by, by sharing using the survey monkey. And then, of course, the intern details must be submitted to us uh, using Excel format. Okay. Uh, manual, right? So they have to do it uh, using Excel. And then, of course, the students or the interns are required to go through my next platform, as I mentioned just now. Okay. And then they have to also submit this evaluation form and also from the company. So they have to make sure that all these seven items are completed. Then only they have to they can submit to Talent Corp for okay. us to process the letter of endorsement. All right, got it. 
All right. So some of the internship trend report which I can actually share with uh, the rest of the audience today. Basically, uh, there are a few uh, important points. Lah, eh? All right. So from, from the industry readiness part, uh, about 8.06 from the scale of 1 to 10, uh, it, it is showing that the internship are prepared. I mean, using this program, they, they get to be prepared. Uh, I mean, it is already a good number from 1 to 10. It is showing that this particular program is very, uh, I mean, successful in making sure that they are industry ready. Okay. All right. So, question, right, Nazir? Does yeah. Nanakop actually provide any training on how to develop structured internship programs for companies, especially the SMEs? Right? We Where provide we the consultation, actually. We don't really conduct training program, okay. but by, by prov providing us with the internship module, right? Uh -huh. So, we can assess that module of yours and okay. we can we can uh, offer necessary advice for it to be, I mean, uh, aligned with the objectives oh, of the program. Okay. Wow. So quite personalized also, yeah? Yes. So you have a yes. Free, free consultancy. Any charges for that? No charges. Okay. Excellent to know. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I think these are also amongst, of the, amongst the information may be relevant for them. Uh, until... Late last year, we have endorsed more than 1,000 companies, meaning they have benefited from this program, getting the double tax deduction from this uh, program. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great, great. Which is good, yeah? Quite, very good. Very good. But if, let's say, Talent Corp got any subsidy for, uh, yeah, we, uh, we allowance subsidies, even better lah. <laughs> is that coming uh, up? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so thank you so much for actually sharing. Now I've got a very a last question just from me, right? Okay. Uh, before we go, right? Okay, what exactly not to do with interns in your companies to ensure that yeah, they don't run away? What not to do? Maybe you can start with Lani first and then we go to Farah and then we go to Nazib. What not to do when you have interns? Or maybe we can have our audience also sharing on your site. Maybe some of you got, you know, some good experience to share with the rest. Go ahead and type it out in the chat box. Let me think about it. <laughs> Farah, Farah sure got a lot of things, right? Ah, and share not. What not to do? What not to do, eh? Employer perspective, is it? Okay. Yeah, employer's perspective. Surely be no more interns after that will apply to your company. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, yeah, I think maybe Nazib mentioned indirectly, but I think I still, I still like it that way. Yeah, don't, don't, don't shout or scold them <laughs> directly. Is it Nazib or Ilani? I know this sounds a bit like, oh, really? I mean, I, I need to sample it, but for me, I know like nowadays students are being brought up like you know behind the screen you know they feel like you know more themselves so when they are in public that's already a fear so some of them even though they are very like super keyboard warrior but then in front they not really that so that's already like you know a big hurdle to them and then when they did mistake and you really emphasize that mistake in front of everybody yeah uh, doesn't have to be a shout but if you emphasize that in front already I think that will uh, emotionally damaged, <laughs> emotional damage. Yeah, emotional damage. Yeah, yeah. but I, I feel some students are really affected by that. And I mean, like a joke aside, I think um nowadays students we need even though we think that they are an intern, some intern really uh you know students come with the right mindset. They really want to learn, and then when they are being thrown into this kind of situation, they feel like. So they are really motivated that we to a point that sometimes we have to really counsel and bring that motivation up. Uh, I mean, like even though we try to tell them, well, reality is like that, but we yeah. cannot. Yeah, we, we try to like. I think maybe yeah. that's my my at least my key thing. Yeah, yeah. don't don't yeah scold them. Mabel Mabel said, don't make them overwork. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Mabel? In my own personal opinion, right? Don't really, really. really <laughs> I don't bully intern, that's right. I, I think it's really up to the individual. So when we assess them before they decide to take them in, right? Actually, there are some interns that do not like menial work because they only they understand that 
this is the only three months or the six months time that they can gather as much experience as they can. And that's where the actually the SME organizations can make the best out of it. Because with SME, you know, the bosses can decide what I can give you and what I don't want to give you or can or don't cannot give you, right? Yeah. So some of these students or these interns, they actually say I prefer with to work with SME because I get thrown into you know handling more, you know happening tasks, like not just menial ones. Because MNC, right? Everything is process-driven. This one cannot touch. That one non-compliance. This one. So they're a bit more rigid. So I think that by giving them menial tasks, you don't really offer them any, you know, um, uh, development for their career. And now we have all heard, right? Once they step out from, you know, being a student, the first thing that they want to get when they apply for a fresh grad job is that, yeah, you're a fresh grad. Can you tell me your work experience? Imagine if they only have that three months to actually work with you, and so happen find a company that didn't provide them that you know that 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 the real uh, the industry. real experience. They've got nothing to share, you know. So back yeah. to you know what people say. I think it's really up to the individual. You got to assess them properly. Yes, some of them are like you know don't make them overwork, but I do believe that there are some individuals who actually go for it, and there yeah. are some individuals is that. Yeah, I'm here for a reason, but if you don't tap into that motivation point, I perhaps I won't give my everything. But if you really can dig out what's the intrinsic motivator, right, they will go all out. I've got yeah. I've got interns who work beyond beyond 12 a.m. Yeah. Of course they work they yeah. work crazy hours. When I'm free, they don't entertain me, they want flexibility, right? Yeah. But they come on work at 12 a.m. when I'm already asleep. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think I, I would like to add to that because you did mention a very good point in terms of flexibility. Uh, my first statement to share with regards to that particular question would be don't try to convert them into being us. We, we are not there. Okay. They, they are, and they, they are, are not right? them. <laughs> yeah. We are not there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as much as possible, uh, we are trying to make sure that they are becoming us or becoming like us. Right. Because we are very old school, right? We, we expect, you know, the interns are supposed to be doing this, yeah. responding in such a way that we would like them to be. Yes. But they are not going to be us. So that's yes. the fact. So yes. secondly, I think what, what not to do is basically, uh, we cannot deprive them of certain things like flexibility. It is yeah. to be expected from this type of, uh, I mean, from this generation. Yeah. Uh, they, they are actually expecting to, you know, be given certain flexibility yeah. in terms of probably how do you you know allowing them to excel in their work mm. you, you don't have to breathe down their necks like you know what i mean like the, those days lah mm. your bosses like, like monitoring you 24 7 they want don't to go see. back before you go, your boss go back is it yes, oh, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, those are very very look like busy yeah, no, no matter what look busy. like busy yeah that's right so yes provide them a platform like what Cassandra and also Z uh, said right provide them yeah. a platform where you must also understand and listen to their needs as well right mm. but also you know Jason brought up a very good point about you know flexibility now we're not saying that providing too much flexibility here to the extent that you know, they don't need guidance, we just give them the freedom and then that it becomes it becomes like, you know, I'm not, I don't even know why I'm here. What what is the corporate goal yeah. again? Or what's the internship goal again? So like what Jason has actually rightfully said, be clear, be specific on the guideline, right? Yeah. And this is where we want to meet and this is the goal. But how yeah. you want to get it, that one, how you want to get there, I totally leave it up to you, right? So that's that's what it means by, yes, providing flexibility, but not too much. Yeah. Right, they still well, one last point, eh, Camelia. Basically, yeah. uh, this is uh, their first glimpse on how actually you know working is all about. Mm. This is their first experience. Yeah. So you have this opportunity of providing them with the right experiential journey. Mm. So they might like it or they might hate it at the end <laughs> of that process. So it is basically up to us on how best can we you know provide the kind of environment. Mm. Uh, I mean, for them to really you know deliver their press or providing uh, I mean the qualities that they have mm. uh, by us you know uh, allowing them to uh, benefit from the program so I think one of the ways is basically to actually regard this internship program as like probationary period from for them ah, okay how you do onboarding of new staff how do you actually welcome them you know right, right. Uh, things like that so they are feeling like they have this sense of belonging they want to be part of 
uh, they want to be part of the organization. Right. And, you know, by creating that kind of environment, it will work positively for both. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Higher chance that they will stay back and become your contributor. Exactly. Exactly. Well. And Lani brought up a good point, right? Don't sugarcoat the work and your expectation. If it's like that, you say it like that, you know. But of course, the way that we say it, we don't scold them, da, yeah. You know. Like for example, right for the event, uh, especially for the event, for the social distance. Cannot hear you, Lani. Closer sorry. the mic, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, so, for better. example, when, you know, I think it's very important because they also want to have a clear understanding of what they are working, right? Especially because what Nazib, this is their first sort of foray into the working environment. So, they want to know what to expect. So, for certain departments, right, or for each department, you really set the, set it clear what the expectation is. So, for example, when I have event interns, when people apply for the event positions, I'm like, hey, Work a lot one. Oh, it's okay. I can work a lot. No, no, no. Work a lot one, you know. Like, <laughs> like sometimes set up if because sometimes if you want to do a concourse activity, you can only set the, the thing can only go live at 10. Means yeah. you have to be there at midnight. Means yeah. you might have to sit in your car, maybe. Yeah. Then you have to start passing the thing do pagi. It work a lot one, you know. And they're like, oh. Uh, so <laughs> these things. That, so that when they come in, they understand that there are certain things that are non-negotiable. Right. There are certain things that are negotiable. So for right. example, okay, so let's say after this event, you work very long hour, okay. Then if you don't have meeting the next day, you know what I mean? Mm. So that there is a balance. But I think I think the, the temptation is always to sort of give in, right? Either give in or like be really rigid, right? No, this is my way. Not want. <laughs> but there are certain things that is a non-negotiable, certain things that is negotiable. And it's whether or not you they, them as the intern want to take that on or not. You get what I mean? Yeah, correct, correct. And sometimes you may just also learn a thing or two from them on how they yeah. you know uh, wow you with using technology or doing things faster. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. Like the system. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think that, okay, if there's any other question, I think we have got a couple more minutes to, to pick up some questions on, you know, how to design a, a better structured inter internship. As, uh, yeah, I've got two more minutes. So, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Cassandra. Okay, if, if there is actually nothing else from the floor, I would like to take this opportunity to, you know, thank all of you for, you know, taking an interest in this topic which can be actually a strategic, you know, talent acquisition approach uh, for, you know, to help not just your company, but help the nation to actually rebuild again, yeah, and to build future leaders for our, uh, for our country. So, and we would like to uh, take this opportunity also to thank uh, all the three speakers here are very generous of you all to actually, you know, come aboard to do this sharing. We love it, right? We appreciate the time and effort in, you know, in you guys, how you actually prepare uh, all the presentations here. So if I've got one more request, I actually forgot to take photo in the screen earlier. So <laughs> after this, can you all just stay back a bit so we can take a photo? And many thanks again, you know, to our co-organizer uh, committee, SME Association, Mr. Chin, uh, Mr. Eng, who is the SME Talents uh, for providing this very relevant platform for this fruitful discussion. So I, on behalf of Cable and SME uh, Talent, hope that everyone has enjoyed uh, this discussion and able to actually take, you know, uh, take home some good tips, uh, good insights, you know, to structure our own internship program. So if uh, it's not too much to ask for, if everybody is still in tune, please type in in the chat box to know, to to okay, like, let the speakers shops and leery a little bit like, See, what's your main key takeaway about today's um, basically today's forum about intern uh, uh, structured internship program? How do we do it differently? Thank you so much, Jason. Right. What are things that you would do today to change the structure to make it more beneficial? I would straight away apply for my next for the tax deduction. That's what I would do. That's my key takeaway. <laughs> yeah, remember, yeah, guys, anybody that you hired since January 2022 is still not too late to actually apply for that. So please go ahead. Right. So with that. Thank you very much, everybody. So I'll see you probably next month for another next uh, interesting topic about Gen Z and building our future leaders.
Thank you so much. Thank Speakers, you. still stay around, stay around for a bit. I want to take a photo sure. with y'all. Sure, sure. Yeah, thanks, Umi. Okay, uh, sharing the slide. Okay, we will directly um, email that over to you. But okay, slides from, I don't know, Lani and <laughs> Nazib probably. Okay, I'll, I, will, I, will, I will actually gather that from Lani and Nazib and see which one are the ones that we are okay to actually share. Yeah, okay, Kim, yes, I'm with you. So I'm on the way to also apply for my next and great internship programs. Yep. Thank you so much, everyone.